Hello, everyone. You're listening to Truth Cat Radio at truthcatradio.com. The current time is 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's East Coast USA, although I'm broadcasting from Chicago. And, uh, oh, the date, uh, November 2nd, 2017. I'm your host, Richard Carey, and this is Beyond the Matrix. Well, thank you, everyone who tuned in tonight. I have a very special guest uh, with us today. Uh, We've been working at trying to get him on uh, with a bit of difficulty uh, the past couple months. Uh, Both like a couple months ago, I think I, yeah, attempted a scheduling. And then then last week as well, we had some technical issues at the last minute. But um, I do indeed have Magador Edward Alexander here uh for you listeners tonight um i'm very very happy that we we got everything worked out and he's he's ready to go here Uh, i do just first want to mention to everyone uh that we are completely listener supported here um we don't do any sort of corporate advertising and we don't do any sort of monetizing even of any sort you know all our archives are even free but uh you know, it's not even that possible to get advertisers these days. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on people to back away from independent media um, sponsorship. So it is the only option to be completely listener supported as we are here. And it's it's really tough at times, you know. Uh, we've been in a bit of financial straits, yeah, in particular lately, lately. So if anyone can uh, donate, please do help us out on our support page. Um, you know, we appreciate any regular c- contributors, you know, that helps keep us going, definitely. And and those last minute contributions, any little oddball amounts, um, you know, you'd be surprised how much that can really add up uh, to make sure we, you know, we keep everything operating, keep all this great information, all these great guests um, and hosts for you. So please uh, go to our support page and, and help out the station, um, you know, in November and December here to keep keep us going through the holidays, you know, a little longer uh, with all the pressure lately out there on on the independent media. Now then, as I said, uh, we have uh, for this airing, Magador Edward Alexander uh, here with us. Magador is originally from Oslo, Norway, and he's currently residing in Argentina. Uh, Edward Alexander, also known as Magador, is a researcher, writer, and instructor. He is the author of a number of books and has researched many topics, including social engineering, conspiracy theories, and many areas of metaphysics, uh, including lucid dreaming, astral projection, other dimensions, reincarnation, and life after. And Magador is going to join us to discuss a variety of these issues and their relevance to our lives and future. So we will be discussing esoteric empowerment. And thank you so much for for being with us, Magador. No, thank you very much for being on the show. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, the honor is mine. uh, But I'm I'm glad that you that you are happy to be here with the listeners as well. Um, Yeah. Finally, so, finally, we are getting this to work because we tried a couple of times and now it's finally working now. So. Well, yeah. Here I am. Yeah, and I did get uh, some, at least something out on Facebook the last half hour there, so at least some people are notified to tune in. Uh, we have regular listeners too, and we'll have it in our archives, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad to finally get, get you on. You're, you're in Argentina. Um, yeah, it's just starting to come yeah. to summer. You're getting warmer finally over there, huh? How's the weather been? Oof, very hot. Right now it's like very hot. You, you don't know. <laughs> we are in the summertime. It's getting close. You know, the next month, uh, December, will be the hottest time of the year. So it's pretty, pretty hot for me. I'm from Norway, a very cold country. Right. So I'm actually a bit sunburned and stuff, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm used to getting a bit sunburned here for the I lived here almost around 11 years now, I guess, in Argentina, in South America, like 12 years now, I guess, 12 years more or less, because I had to 
I had to get out of Norway because of problems with the government and stuff because of my work against society, you know, against the system and the, the secret societies and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's why I'm here actually in, in Argentina. I've been living here like a, in exile more or less. Wow. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, 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 you weren't officially thrown out of the country or or would have been arrested if you stayed there but mm. but but getting a lot of pressure was getting harder and harder to to just do everything day-to-day -day life no uh, i will making things difficult yeah i will i will explain to this how it all came to be the way it came to be it happened like this i started to actually long time ago like i think about 15 years ago I started a website where I started to expose all of these kinds of It was one of the first websites in those times that was speaking about the truth and from a real insight because I come from a fam family that is part of the, the, you know, the government, the military and the other part. My father is from secret societies and stuff, but my mother is from military and government and all that kind of stuff. So I had a lot of knowledge. And I was also part of all that kind of things. I started to become a Freemason and a member. And I said, oh, okay. And I started to research. I started to become a member. To Actually, I became a member just to kind of infiltrate the system to see what's what's really going on inside, inside the lodges, inside the Masonic system. So I became a member because of that to actually see from within to not only just have theories and stuff like that, but to see mm -hmm. the reality. Okay. And I started to speak about that. And then a lot of problems came to me, you know. They gave me a lot of real big problems in Norway. So what really happened is like a couple of years after, one guy came to me, he, you know, actually, <laughs> it sounds kind of like fiction, but it's, it is the truth. But a guy came to me with a black van, like a man in black, and he came to my house where I lived in that time. I rented a place, and he came to my place, and he said to me, you have to be quiet, you have to stop talking about this stuff, or you will have a really deep problem. And that kind of scared me a little bit, you no? Know, because he came with, you know, like sunglasses with uh, Ear pierced and stuff like that. He really, you know, you know, just like in the movies and stuff like that. And he told me you have to be quiet mm -hmm. about this stuff or you will have problems. And that's what he said to me. And I said, oh, okay. And he, he went and I spent some time without doing anything. Uh, I didn't publish anything. I didn't do anything because I got a little bit scared because I was pretty young about that. And because I'm not that old. I'm 37 years old right now. And anyway, uh, that happened to me, and I was like, okay, this is kind of <laughs> creepy. What the hell? What's going on with this guy coming to me like this? How do it, how does he know where I live and stuff? And I think, okay, I will be, I will keep quiet for a bit and see what happened. Okay. And then after I started again, because nothing happened and everything, okay, I will start to tell the truth, uh, continue with my work and all that kind of things. And, uh, well, then the big problems came because a couple of years after that, I went back to my, actually I moved from one city to another, you know, uh, like you said, Oslo. And then I moved mm -hmm. to another city that's called Christian Sand, and I okay. live there. And I was continuing my work against, uh, you know, the secret societies and the Illuminati and the people in power and all the conspiracies and secrets that's going on and I, I was speaking out about that kind of stuff because my mother she told me a lot of stuff my father told me a lot of stuff and they were both part of you know one part was the military and government and the other part was the secret wars and you know all that kind of stuff so i i had a lot of knowledge and understanding they brought me to like secret places like my mother she brought me to secret military bases and stuff like that and showed me what's going on when i was actually a very little young boy at the time i didn't understand much what they, what's going on but mm -hmm. later on i understood much more 
Mm. And my father, he told me a lot, and he told me he's going to teach me someday. But they, you know, I think he was killed. But the official story is that he he drowned in in actually in New Year in the what do you call it in Swedish English the New Year's Eve, no? New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, my father he 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 died when I was like that. That was when I was like eleven years old when he died. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the other stuff had happened after, but he died when he when I was young. When he told me, okay, I'm going to teach you some things that are very secret and stuff. And right after he died, and now later on in my life and stuff, when I know all the stuff he was involved with, because I discovered later on, like now. That he was part of the secret societies and all that. I didn't know at the time when I was, uh, when I was a little boy, but now I know because my grandfather he continued to teach me, and he told me, "Okay, excuse me, moment." <coughs> and he told me that yeah, we have a we are part of a secret order, and I will continue to teach you because your father is not here anymore; he can't. So I will teach you, so you can be the next grand master of the order because it's like a family-oriented uh, order that is based upon a really old order from Switzerland mm-hmm. that actually was started in uh, a place called Ogos in, uh, in, in, well, in Switzerland. You can Google it if you want and uh, search for Isle of Ogos. You spell it E-I-S-L-E and Ogos. O-G-O-Z. How you call it. And uh, anyway, uh, I learned all of that kind of stuff after uh, a few years after he passed away and all that kind of stuff. I found out that he was part of that and I went with my family to get his belongings and all his stuff and I found out, wow, he got a lot of books about magic, about secrets, about all this kind of stuff, really ancient things. He had books that were like from the, like, you know, 1500, 1600 century and stuff like that. And I was thinking, what the heck? What's, what's all this stuff? And I was looking into it and I understood because my grandfather told me, okay, your father was also part of this order, but he passed on. Now I have to pass on the knowledge to you. And he started to teach me all that kind of stuff. And my mother told me all the secret stuff about the. Uh, Oh, you know, the government and the military. I can't go into very deep details because I don't want to expose, you know, my my family and stuff. But right. anyway, mm-hmm. I learned a lot of stuff. And that's how things started rolling. And I started my projects and I started writing. I started my website. I started to speak out about it, write about it, make videos about it. When I was pretty young, actually, and then, uh, like I told this man in black, came to my house, so I stayed quiet for a while. But after I continued, and then, like a couple of years after, I guess, they they kind of set up a, like like a trap for me, you know, because I was starting to get really into this kind of stuff, and I was starting to get a lot of visitors to my website. I had like a million people visiting my site and stuff like that. It was called, uh, called in that time darktruth.org uh, and uh, darktruth.com, uh, I think. And that's a long time ago. But anyway, I had a lot of visitors coming to those sites. It was one of the first alter- alternative news sites that existed in those times, really. So I had a lot of visitors. I had a lot of views. It became very popular. and. I had a, I used to have a program that could track people that were con- trying to hack into my computer, trying to check what I was doing and all that kind of stuff. So I could monitor who was trying to connect and who was doing what. And there was people from the Vatican, there were people from the FBI, there were people from the NSA, there were people in the military from all parts of the governments and all kind of stuff that were trying to hack into my computer and stuff. And I could see that because I got, uh, 
I don't remember how they do the problems for all my it's so many years ago. But anyway, the point is uh, I got aware of that and I was like, okay, they, they what's going on? They are trying to get into here and stuff. And then one day, one day, I, like I was like, uh, I think, I guess I was around. 20 years old at the time, something like that. Yeah, around 20 years old. And the police came to me. They were like, okay, what's up? No, you got a lot of uh, drugs. No, what? what? What are you talking about? I said, I don't have any drugs. I don't do, I don't do any drugs. I didn't even start to drink until I was 19 years old. The first time I tasted a beer was when I was 19 years old and I didn't smoke or anything at the time and the police came to, came to me because they set up a trap and they sent a lot of drugs to my address where I used to live in that time and that's how all the problems started because they sent all that kind of drugs to my address they sent you know like uh, what did they send like 100 grams of nothing, uh, amphetamine Fifth, no, 15,000 pills of something. I don't even know what actually there was inside pills, what kind of pills, I don't know. But 15,000 pills of something to my address. And I mean, who is so stupid that they would send to their own address 15,000 <laughs> pills? <laughs> so obviously that it, it was the, them that did it to shut me down. You know, they tried to shut me down and shut me up and closed my mouth. And they came to me and I had to actually go to jail and stuff. And I spent like one month in jail because of that stuff. And they, in the jail, the, 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 the police, you know what you call it? Like the, the chief of the police, the chief of the police, he told me, okay, we can do it like this. I will say you only had like half of the stuff. So you will get like half the sentence. And we will keep the other half. So they are so corrupt and stuff. First of all, they send it to me. They send it to me. And then after they give me the blame for doing it, and they send me to the jail. And then they tell me, okay, we will say it was only half the stuff, and we keep the other half. If then, okay. And of course, they had to say yes, because I am not going to say no. I, it's all mine. No, it's nothing is mine. I, I don't know anything about it. So I had to just say, okay, okay, yeah, uh, do do that, and uh, okay. And I, I spent one mon month in, uh, well, in, Nor Nor in Norway, it's called isolation. I don't know if you call it the same over there in the United States and stuff, but in Norway, it's called uh, isolation. That means you are totally isolated. You can't be in contact with family or friends or other inmates or anything. You're totally isolated. You can't be in contact with anybody except for the guards and the police and stuff like that. And they came all the time to interrogate me and telling me to shut up. And they told me really directly, you have to stop talking about the kind of things you're doing or you're going to get in really deep trouble. You think you're in problem now? Well, you will see problems if you continue this kind of stuff. And well, okay, after a while they let me out, after a month or so. And they let me out, and I, <laughs> I was like, holy shit, man, they are really serious about that kind of stuff. That means that's actually something, truth to what I'm speaking about. If they are so crazy doing that kind of stuff, it means that what I'm talking about is, is real. That I'm not to just imagining these kind of things, but it's real. I know and that you, what I'm speaking about is real. Yeah, and that and that they yeah. can see you can make a difference. Uh, you can make you were making you were starting to make a difference uh, that was a threat to them. Clearly, so. Yeah, uh, it was like a kind of movement because a lot of people started to kind of listen to me, and uh, I lived in a small town and stuff, and the, the, the people started to listen to me, and they started to be you know kind of anti-governmental and uh, listen to. Me about uh, secret societies and what's really going on in the world and the conspiracies and all, all that kind of stuff started about that time for me and my friends and the people in that area where I lived. But well, I, I continued and and they did the same thing again. They sent even, even more stuff to me in my name and they gave me actually, you know, 
the reason I'm here in Argentina is because I had to escape because they were so hard against me. They really, really tried to shut me down really, really hard. They sent even more things to me, to my address all the time, drugs and stuff, illegal things. And in the end, I got a sentence of one year to be in prison. So, but I, I went to Brazil first before I actually had to go to the jail and all that kind of stuff. Because I said, well, I'm not going to jail for this stuff that is, you know, is <laughs> is not real. It's just made up that they are crazy. They are making all this kind of. But I can't prove it. I could not prove it in any way. I had a lawyer and stuff, and my lawyer was saying, yeah, okay, I'm going to help in all that stuff. And what I found out after was that my lawyer is a Freemason, and the judge is also a Freemason, and they they were working together to shut me up basically so that's what happened so i thought okay i'm gonna get the hell out of here because before they do anything worse to me because they are really trying really hard to shut me up so i i got out of norway i went to brazil first of all after all that problem and they they continue to make problems they like closed down my bank accounts they even closed, closed my PayPal account. They made so much uh, problems for me because they tried to shut me down in every way they could, like economically, physically, mentally, all the ways they could. They used all kind of attacks against me, like, you know, they used magic against me, uh, you know, because these are guys that are Masons and Freemasons, you know, uh, and they, they, they are into magic and stuff like that. and. So, esoteric stuff and, uh, they actually practice a lot of black magic and stuff like that and they did a lot of black magic against me that made a lot of problems for me in my life but after a while i figured out okay i understand and i realized what is really going on and i did my own magic and things to pro protect myself and that worked out pretty good and yeah. uh, but okay. anyway yeah. Perhaps we can, uh, yeah, discuss a bit the, uh, the, you know, the positive and negative forces um, you mentioned uh, within a lot of these groups. I mean, you said that it sounds like there's there's black magic and there's also white magic. There, there are people who are, you know, service to self and uh, destructive to others. And there are also people who are, you know, live and let live, uh, you know, service to others, uh, light worker types as well. Um, yes, you, you yes, mentioned yes. Some, like the Freemasons, uh, I don't know. You mentioned uh, that there, there are like inner circles to a lot of these groups. It might be the exterior uh, of the group that's good or more, um, you know, evil, uh, <laughs> if you will, in their motivation, and then perhaps a, a layer underneath, uh, more hidden, that is more the opposite. Um, I, I suppose it can go either direction in a, in a lot of these cases. But um, well, you mentioned. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you mentioned the, the, the different uh, levels that most people, um, you know, don't acknowledge. I mean, as far as most people understand, they refer to Freemasons up to what, like 32, 33rd degree. You say in some of the well, more uh, hidden circles. It, it's it, actually more. I'm, I'm personally, I'm a 97 degree Freemason. 97. Anyway, it, so 97th yeah, degree. 97. It goes up to 1999. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that mm -hmm. Freemasons in itself is not evil. The problem yeah. is it has been so corrupted that a very big part of the Freemasonry today is run by, well, let's call it evil people, nothing less because they are evil people. But that doesn't mean that all Freemasons are evil because they are not. You, 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 when you join a Freemason group, you are not an evil person. You join because you want to do something good because they kind of trick you into, well, we are doing this good stuff and helping people and all that kind of stuff and esoteric things. And But uh, you have the Scottish, it's kind of complicated because there are different rights, it's called. For example, the Scottish right, the York right, the Swedish right, the misrun right and so on different rights of freemasonry that are against each other for example the misrun right 
is against the Scottish right. They are actually kind of enemies. And the Muslim right is actually better than the Scottish right because they are more pure, or they are more esoteric, and they have more of the true knowledge of the true, uh, you know, the true Freemason. Like it started because it started like a good thing. It didn't start out bad. It's it became corrupted at some time uh, because the evil guys took over and they got to control and it started to become corrupted and they used it against people to control people and all that kind of stuff. And they actually removed a lot, a lot of the teaching, the esoteric stuff. So if you join Freemason, a Freemasonic lodge now, most of the time it will be a Scottish white lodge, most of the time. If you're lucky, you can get into a Misram right or other right, but most of the time it's Scottish right. That's the most common thing all over the world, wherever you, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. And that's the most corrupt of all of the rights. Also the Swedish right, which is more Nordic. I don't know if it even exists in the United States, but in Norway, Sweden, Finland and stuff like that. Uh, Swedish right is what's more common than the Scottish right. The Scottish right uh, doesn't really have much power there, but anyway, they are kind of the same because they, they are also very corrupt. And, you know, they have a lot of people like uh, lawyers and, uh, you know, people from politicians and people in government and stuff like that, that are members. And, and they try to kind of get power over the people and used other people below them as kind of slaves just to control them and manipulate them. Uh, they use mind control techniques, you know. I learned a lot about that kind of stuff because I used to be part of a secret group that used that kind of technique. So I learned a lot about how it works, how it functions, how they do it. And uh, I, you know, I have wrote, wrote a lot about that kind of stuff in my books, like my book that is called Earth Spiritual Trap, for example. That gives a lot of examples on the mind control techniques they use and all that kind of stuff because they are, they are actually very evil, and but at the same time they are very very intelligent and very smart and they know very good what they're doing because they have been doing it for so long. They have been controlling this world for hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of years. I guess actually I I will I will say thousands of years. And yes. all of that time, they they have been ruling this world, these guys. Yeah, there have certainly been Gnostics, uh, mystics, uh, going back for for yes, many, many thousands of years, um, hundreds of thousands of years. But um, yeah, as as far as the uh, influence different religions have had on on these d different um, secret societies. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've also been curious, very curious about that. I mean, we have like, you know, very uh, ancient civilizations and their religions, like, you know, the Egyptians uh, and their religion, the Persians and, and Zoroastrian. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've been curious. Some people have, have, have mentioned that a lot of corruption uh, to some Freemasonry has, has come from Zionism, perhaps, and, and ancient... Uh, you know, Judaic uh, sects, and then of course, like those, like the Knights Templar, which seem to be like you know Christian inspired. I don't know what what do you know of like the influence of some of these religions on on these societies? You know, like Zoroastrian, um, uh, you know the, uh, the the Zionism and uh, you know ancient Talmud, oh. uh, these sort of things. Well, yeah, uh, but actually, it's kind of reverse because a lot of these religions have been created by these people that are running these secret orders and stuff ah okay, or okay. The, uh, for, for example now we have all this new age stuff you know like new age this and that and everything you know all, all new age stuff now for example it's very heavily controlled by the the secret society they give out so much false information that like i will say like 90 90 percentage or more of all new age material you find is lies and manipulation you have books like for example what is called like uh, you know uh, uh, what is called S S seth speaks or something like that i think 
Anyway, the point is that a lot of <laughs> this uh, info, so-called information that we got in the new age scene or place right now is very false. It's fill, fill, filled with lies and misinformation and uh, really control. You have all these websites, for example. I see a lot of websites that is so-called against all the Illuminati, against all the conspiracy, you know, all, but in reality, these sites are controlled by these guys. So if you really start to speak about real truth, they will ban you and they will delete you. Like that happened to me very many times when I started to actually post things that were real, real truth. They banned me and they deleted my post and they, uh, deleted all the information that I posted. So I know what kind of sites are, you know, controlled. Like, for example, uh, you have godlikeproductions.com, for example. You have abovetopsecret.com, for example. These sites are controlled by these guys. And they try to manipulate people. They let people let believe whatever they believe speak about whatever they want but if you speak about real truth and start to post real information they will ban you and they will delete your posts and all that kind of stuff well wow. so it's very controlled all of the websites but also the books and the main media and all everything that relates to the new age and the, uh, you know the, the the conspiracies and the paranormal and spirituality in, in special spirituality and religion and all of that stuff is heavily heavily controlled by by the guys in power you know speaking of uh, who's in power um i heard you reference in other interviews that uh, one of our greatest uh, faults is we uh, underestimate our each of our ability to contribute to creating our own reality um I don't know. Could you yes? Could you ex explain this a bit more for our listeners? Well, the thing is, what they are doing, <laughs> they are using us to create a reality that they want. They are making us believe something, and belief. When you believe something, you kind of manifest it. So when you believe something, you manifest that reality. So they make all of the world believe in something, and then it becomes it becomes kind of like the truth, it becomes uh, the reality. But the thing is, you can create your own reality. You, it's easy to kind of control your own uh, personal reality, but it's more difficult to make big changes in the world. Like for example, you, you can make changes in your own life, like get more money, get a better job, you know, make, uh, spiritual progress and all that kind of things but it's difficult for example to make world peace or things like that because it's so heavily influenced because there are millions and millions and millions of people believing it is like that and because of that they put all that energy into it and then it becomes reality because everything is mental all energy comes from the mind of the things that are you know part of the world, the system, society, is a mental thing. It's what you believe is what is going to happen. And that's what they are doing. They are making people believe certain things and then it becomes the truth. But uh, there is no real truth. The truth is what you create yourself and you can create your own truth and you can kind of disconnect from all of that stuff all of that you know bullshit that they try to manipulate you with and create your own mind create your own world create your own self create your own reality and understand you know like i have been speaking about it like you mentioned to be in the in the beginning astral projection lucid dreaming that kind of stuff is very very important because uh, and that's a part of ourself you know for example astral projection is about uh, going out of your physical body and exploring the non-physical world, the spiritual world, the, the world where you're going when one day we're all going to die. And you know, like the Tibetans, the Egyptians, they actually were teaching people and this guy, they still do. They have the Book of the Dead and all that kind of stuff that is teaching people that are dead 
how to go to the next level, how to continue when they are dead, how to continue to the next phase and so on. And that's actually true because when you die, if you don't know that stuff, they teach you, you are part of a religion, for example, let's say Christianity or whatever. They say, okay, when you die, you have to go to the light and that's it, and you will go to uh, heaven. But that's a lie because if you go to light, you will actually go to a false dimension. It is it's a creation. It's kind of it's very complicated to explain you because it's so complex. You know, it's so extremely, extremely complex, extremely complicated because they have been doing this for thousands and thousands of years, creating these false realities around us that. Now they are real, but at the same time they are false because it's not reality. When you go to so-called heaven, well, you're not really in heaven. It's just a false place that they keep you for a while and then they send you back. That's why we have reincarnation, for example. Reincarnation is a trap. It's part of what I call a trap system. When reincarnation is only because you die and you don't have the knowledge how to escape or how to be free. So then you end up back to become a slave another time again on earth in physical form because we are here like slaves, nothing more. We are just like slaves for the guys in power. We are the slaves. We are like, they also consume, they use our energy and things like that. That's a completely different topic in reality, but you have like astral vampires and stuff like that. And it's a very complex topic to get into. It will take a long time to really explain all that kind of stuff, but People have to become more aware about themselves, their spiritual self, their mental self, about the astral planes, about dreams, lucid dreams, and become more aware, become awake. Because people normally, they just go to work every day, they go home, they do watch some TV, they do drink a couple of beers, they go to bed and that's it, and they don't do anything more. That, 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 you know, that's life for them, nothing more. Very few people are actually really, you have the so-called religious people, but they too are for because they are false because they believe in something, but it's not real. They just believe it. They don't have any evidence or proof. They just believe it because they say it's like this or that. So they go to church, they pray to God and they follow the Bible or they go to, they are Muslims or they are Christians or they are whatever religion. It doesn't matter what religion they are, but. Basically, all the religions are false and created by the people in power to make mankind trapped down and below the real spiritual self. We have to stop believing in all the religious shit because, and all also all the New Age stuff because the, all the New Age stuff is mostly lies. There are some truths in some things, but most of them are kind of mixed with lies and truths. And, some are totally manipulation and mind control and all that kind of stuff. So it will keep you off the track and it will put you aside and you will come back again after and you will return because of the reincarnation cycle. So you'll be in kind of like a loop going back, back. You die, you live, become a slave again and you die and you return, become a slave again for the guys in power. And that's how it works, the world. Most, you know, like 99% of the world are just workers and slaves for the 1% that are the guys in power that doesn't do anything and get all the money, all the power, and they also use the energy. They mm. use spiritual energy. They, they, they feed on our spiritual energy as well. It's not about money only. It's also about a spiritual energetical thing here we are talking about like that you, you, you mentioned even you mentioned there are even non-physical entities um among us who, who can be mind controlled uh, as as well by, oh. by by other entities there there are so many entities you know and um, this as... world is filled filled with entities because uh, the the way i have found it to be I, the way i personally see it it's like this world has been created to keep us trapped nothing more this yep. world was not created by god to keep uh, to be a nice place. it was created by what should i call it you know like uh, the opposite of god like 
Satan to keep us like slaves and a false place to live like, okay, we live in a good place and all that kind of stuff. We have freedom, mm. blah, blah, blah. But in reality, what do we have? Nothing. We have to work. We have to be slaves. We have to make money. And mm. the banks, you know, the, the Templars created the bank systems. The Templars, the secret order. And they created that system a long time ago, like in a thousand years ago, more or less, something like that, or 1,000 years ago, I guess. They and created mentioned... the banking system. Yeah. And you mentioned that even the... Uh religions, uh, most all the human religions are also, um, you know, just created by, well, and a lot of times these secret societies, but uh, to enforce that trap, uh, the, the human trap, uh, even through reincarnation, it, it's a trap and a cycle we keep going through. Uh, this esoteric, timeless knowledge uh, of the ancient Gnostics, you imply that the, the Egyptians perhaps had a, a bit better, maybe not complete understanding, but a, a little bit better understanding of these things than, than we do. Uh, I think in the past you've also referred to the, uh, the Dogon, the Dogon fish uh, people cult uh, of the past. I know even the current Pope's hat is influenced by these these this ancient Dogon religion, yeah. isn't that right? Could you tell yeah, us a true. bit about? Could you tell us a bit about some of the enlightenment, perhaps? You know, this this, this, this Dogon culture had toward toward reality. Well, the thing is that the people now that are in control, of the world, like for example, like you're talking about the Pope and his hat and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, it has to do with uh, these uh, dogons and the fish. Uh, it's shaped like like a fish, but uh, the, the thing is, it, 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 these guys that are in power have the power because they are in uh, direct connection with spiritual entities above that are more powerful and have a lot of uh, power that are controlling and my, doing all that mind control. They, they are controlling all a lot of these entities that are around us, they are sending, uh, you know, like they are implanting thoughts, thoughts and emotions and things into people that are false, but for the people it will be like reality because it's implanted like a real thing and they will feel like, for example, sad or depressed or angry, but it's implanted because they implant emotions and feelings and uh, even ideas and thoughts they can create you know almost anything with implanting thoughts i know personally techniques how to implant this kind of thing uh, thoughts and ideas into other people because they have specific methods that they have taught taught to me when i was part of all that stuff right now i left everything because everything is so corrupt and I decided, okay, I will be on my own and continue mm. on my own and completely on my own and learn from my own experience. I, I, I don't want anymore to be part of all these secret doors and things because there's so much corruption. And it's always somebody inside that are corrupt and want to have power and control and, you know, make decisions and control other people and, you know, it's always like that in this world. Everywhere, you know, it's like politicians and stuff too. Almost every politician, <laughs> almost every one of them, they become politician because they want power and control, nothing more. Not because they want to help people or be good. That's something they say, of course, but in reality, they just want to be powerful and become presidents and stuff like that and have a lot of influence and power and control. So the, the, the best thing people can do is to leave all religions and leave all politics and be free of all that kind of stuff and be on their own and learn from their own experience and start to look into things like astral projection, lucid dreaming, um, meditation, things that they can do themselves to have real experience and not false teaching, for example, there are truth in things like Christianity, for example, the Bible and Jesus. Yeah, Jesus was a real guy and stuff like that. But they have manipulated the Bible too and they have changed it and rewritten it and made a lot of changes and stuff. So it's mixed with 
truth and lies, like almost everything in this world, almost everything in this world that we are taught are a mix between lies and lies and truth to control us and manipulate us and keep us in a, a lower state than we really uh, can be. So we have to break out of that and stop believing anything anybody else tells us and only believe what we experience on our own, only believe in what you can do on yourself, only believe in what you're able to actually observe and, you know, kind of experience by your own. That's what you have to believe in, not what people tell you. If I tell you it's like this or that, okay, and people believe it. Like, you know, people are like, they are so ignorant, many people. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed, uh, yeah, and I also noticed a lot of the forces and influence uh, tends to go either one extreme or the other, Um, you know, either completely to materialism uh, or or completely to... um, well, rejecting the physical of this of this earth, um, but at the same time, that's of course giving up to any other forces. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that perhaps the Western world, at least, is too consumed with all or nothing. I mean, the physical and spiritual are are are, are connected. They're they're not that separate, right? They're they're intermingled. We need to a balance and and embrace both of them. Isn't wouldn't that be accurate, uh, Magador? Yeah. Is yeah. that perhaps is that perhaps one of the secrets? Is that perhaps one of the secrets that they try to keep from us? You know, we're we're to believe we're supposed to indulge completely in material or spiritual, but not both. Uh, perhaps that's so. The Asian yes, cultures yes. Uh, have always had on us. Uh, Asian cultures seem to be very in touch with you know the yin yang and all this sort of thing. Yes, of course. Uh, that's exactly what they are trying to do. You know, they they mix in. You know this. Uh, material world but also they have the spiritual part but it's false spirituality so uh, you know they may be because spirituality is something people have within them it's, it's uh you know like wait a minute because it's a uh, a couple of dogs and stuff <laughs> uh, but okay. yeah you know uh, i have a, what I have they a do question is they... oh go ahead what Oh, no, continue, please. What they do, you were saying? Yeah, no, what they do is they, they create both, okay? The spiritual part, uh, you have all the religions, the spirituality, the new age stuff and all that kind of thing. And you have the materialistic world, the, kind of, the people that, uh, atheists and whatever they call it, the people that don't believe in anything spiritual. And they create both that things, both uh, against each other. But at the same time, the reality is something completely different. And they hide that by creating the other, uh, what should I call it, you know, like systems, uh, you know, like ideologies and stuff like that, uh, spiritual or materialistic, whatever it is. And they create that and they make it, make people believe it because they have grown it so large. Like now we have, you know, I don't, know how many millions and millions of people are for example christians how many millions are muslims how many millions are into you know all kind of religions and stuff like that and that's all because it's created to be like that because they want to control us and make us believe in something that is uh, kind of false but at the same time let us feel spiritual but it doesn't give us anything practical it doesn't teach us how to actually see the things they're speaking about for example you have the Bible speaking about angels and heaven, all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't tell you how to see the angels or how to co- communicate with the angel. But you can learn how to do that if you really want to. If you know, like I'm talking about astral projection, lucid dreaming, all that kind of stuff, we'll teach you that. Excellent. Well, um. We have about five minutes uh, before the break, and then we have a five-minute break. So, um, I don't know, in, in these last five minutes of the first hour, um, I don't know, what would you like to, uh, you know, to, you know, to, to, to sum up uh, before we get into the second hour? <laughs> um, I don't know, but like this, a lot of the astral projection you mentioned, um, does this have to do with, well, what I would suspect to be, uh, you know, working on meditation, 
Uh, would that be the primary? Uh, and, and and well, uh, astral projection is different from meditation because mm -hmm. uh, astral projection is a physical. Uh, no, it's not a physical. It's a spiritual separation from the physical body. A meditation is uh, something else. It's more like. You lay down in bed and you close your eyes and you relax. Maybe you have some visions, stuff like that. That's relax, that's meditation. But astral projection is to actually leave the physical body and go out of the physical body in spiritual form, you know, in your astral body or your spirit or your soul, whatever you want to call it, and actually experience the spiritual world. And you can see other spirits because when you go out of the body and you be I mean, your spiritual self, you can also see the other spirits that are around you, in your room, in your house, outside, whatever. And you can go wherever you want, to other planets, uh, to other other dimensions too. And it's, it's very complex, actually. It's, it's so much because it's so deep. I've been doing this for like, uh, let me think, 20 years, I guess now. 20 years, more or less, more than 20 years, actually. No, much more than 20 years. 20-something 20 plus years I've been doing astral projections and out of body experience and that kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it's very deep because the more you experience, the more you get to know and the more you will see and the more questions you will have wow. and the more answers you will get. It's something you have to start and do. Okay, well, we're going to have to have you do some astral projection underneath the Getty. That would be very useful. <laughs> Yeah, we're, yeah, we're planning Richard. to have him back for other shows, Stephen. So, yeah, Richard, certainly. Richard, I've got to tell you real quick here before we go on break. Um, mm -hmm. You're 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 uh, a little hot. You know, your microphone, it's kind of, your volume's correct, but it's the gain's high. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's, uh, it's distorting a little bit. So it's almost like you got to somehow turn down, the, turn up the volume, but turn down the gain. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I brought down the... Uh, does this sound better? Is this well, sound it, okay? It's it's just really high gain right it's, now. Okay. It's still that way. Uh, yeah, it is. It's still it's still that. Are we on break? No. Yeah, we're not on break. We were going to take break. A break is whenever I say it is. We're actually uh, a minute early, but. Or is this better? This that's is... better. Yeah, that's All better right, right, right there. All right, okay, All right. cool. <clears throat> All right, everybody, be quiet. No okay. talking. All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Happy Thursday. Happy November. This is Truth Cat Radio, www.truthcatradio.com. Thank you for being here. And as you know, we are 100% listener supported. And it is the beginning of the month. And in the beginning of the month, it's the second already. And shush, shush. This is, a, this is serious now. Come on, guys. Quish. Shush. This is where that part where I ask people for money. So you got to be quiet. All right? No, no laughing. It's serious. Serious business. Okay. We don't want people to think that we don't really need it. Okay, we seriously, we need it. It's the beginning of the month, first couple of days of the month. Hey, shush, guys. All right, I know. He's off running around getting drinks and stuff. That's it. All right, jeez, I get so distracted when there's noises when I'm trying to do this commercial. Jeez, damn telephone. <clears throat> All right, anyway, guys, it's the beginning of the month. Two days in, the, the bills are going to hit us pretty soon. You know, we have bills at the other month. Ah, man, a stupid telephone. Oosh. Magador. That See? phone. Yes. Yeah. I mean, now is a good time to figure out how to mute your phone. So, oh, stop yeah, that! Sorry, I, I had a friend. Put your, okay, you see speak. the button where the microphone is? The little button, the little hole right there where you speak on the microphone is. Cover it with your finger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cover it. Put your finger Wait over that. Speaking. Over the microphone. That'll help. And now don't now don't bang the phone like a hammer. And we should be okay. <laughs> or tap on it. Anyway, let me start. Uh, shush, 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 shush. We'll tell you when you can talk. Shush. <sighs> okay, people. Excuse me. All right. Anyway, yes, this is Truth Cat Radio, and yes, we need your funds. Okay. All of you, millions of listeners, if I know, I know you just wanted to help us out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know there's not a million listeners, but so, but we have to ask extra hard because if there's if not a million listeners, that means that those of you that are listening have to help out even more. If you're on listening to this via YouTube, yeah, we expect you to help us too if you can, all right? I mean, if you appreciate this stuff and the very fact that we're able to do it, then you know, knock us down a, a nickel because we don't have advertisings and we don't have corporations giving us the big bucks to spew propaganda, okay? 
So we're trying to provide you content that is not tainted by that. But we have to live in poverty in order to do so. So if you could just help us out, in, and trust me, the little donations we get are barely barely cover what we need, but we still have to ask, okay? So please, if you could drop a buck on our PayPal, it's stephenkelly714 at gmail.com. And yeah, if you don't like the PayPal, we'll tr trust me, if we ever get it, become a corporation, we'll get a fancy uh, tr truthcat.com PayPal. But until then... We have to use Stephen Kelly714 at gmail.com. That's S T E V E N K E L L E Y714 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you for that. <clears throat> now, if you want to communicate with Truth Cat uh, because you would like to do a show or you'd like to be involved or you'd like to help out or you'd like to call up something and say, How can I help? You need to send me an email. You can call into the show right now and talk to us. And the phone number for that is 714 598 3125. All right. Now, I don't know if Richard's given that out yet during the show, but I'm going to do it one more time. The area code is 714. That's Orange County for if you're interested. 598-3125. All right. 714-598-3125. That's our mantra. Uh, if you want to call in via Skype, you're going to, you, you're going to dial, you can use, send a contact request to Stephen period, D period Kelly, the same as the name, only it's got a D and a uh, two periods, one in the front of the D and one in the back of the D. And you send that and say, I want to join the, the broadcast and I will hook you up right away and get you in here. Okay. Now, as I said, if you want to, uh, you know, do business with Truth Cat Radio and, or try to help us and you want to need to communicate, you're not going to call, you can send me an email to LAW17GUN, that's Law 17 Gun, Law 17 Gun at AOL.com. That is strictly for correspondence. Don't use that for PayPal. And don't send any correspondence to the PayPal address. Now, after Richard, in about an hour, I will be on with my show, Stephen D. Kelly Show. So I know, I, I know you're going to want to stick around for that. I'm probably going to be too burned out afterwards to continue. But who knows? You never know. You never know. We might keep talking. But uh, you know I'm going to be talking about the Getty. And yes, I am recruiting people who do astral protection and psychics. I recruited a guy that does levitation the other day, levitates objects, you know? So yeah, we're putting together our team Jedi and we're just going to save the world. No big, just, you know, but if you want to be part of that, contact us. Okay. Because we're, uh, we're actually recruiting right now. And that's not a joke. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, this will be the end of our live broadcasting. I want to apologize for Graham. We actually had everything working, and suddenly he lost his audio, or his microphone stopped working, and it was, I mean, right before we were start ready to broadcast, he lost his microphone. So it's always something. Anyway, <clears throat> but we're trying. Anyway, okay, well, that's it. I'm not going to give you the rest of the schedule, uh, but... Uh, Let's see, I am going to remind you that uh, you are listening to Richard Carey with Beyond the Matrix and uh, his guest, who's uh, Edward Alexander. Uh, God, not forget it. He'll, you can repeat that later. But apparently Dave Robbins wants to join us, so I'm going to be bringing him in here. Dave, of course, has been playing hooky like so many people nowadays on this, this radio business, and he's in the doghouse, but I guess he's going to come on and... Uh, and, and put in some time. There he is. I'm, I'm going to bring him in right now. Be quiet if you're listening, Dave, until until the show starts. But, uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Top of the hour, 6 o'clock. Well, that's good enough. I hope you guys enjoyed that break. And just remember, send us money, okay, please? All right, a dollar maybe? All right? And if you do, make sure that you say it's for a friend or family so that PayPal doesn't uh, tax us and we get the whole, you know, they don't take out any quarters or anything like that. <sighs> Looks like Dave's here. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, let's see, what else? Mm, oh, yeah, give us a thumbs up when if you're looking at this on the YouTube, please, or listening to it on YouTube, and a nice comment, and share it with your friends on Facebook, okay? The Facebook stuff is really important. Even if you don't like Facebook, please use it, because this is the best way to reach other people and to get them involved with what we're doing, okay? So if you can, share everything. Join all of our Truth Cat Radio Facebook pages, and obviously, Help us out in any way you can, including donations, if you will, please. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Richard. We're going to be on the Matrix. And before I do, I'm just going to say real quick that it is November 2nd, 2017. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Stephen. And welcome back, everyone. And welcome back, Magador. Uh, yes, hello. Yeah, How's yes, 
Good. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, before we get into uh, you know the the other topics we mentioned more with the perhaps or the astral projection uh, and other entities, uh, the, the the brainwashing. Um, I have uh, actually one of our co-hosts of Truth Cat Radio here with us, uh, Dave Robbins uh, from his show Mystic mm-hmm. Freedom. Hi, everybody. Thanks for Hello. having me on, Richard. Hello. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here, Dave. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, on the subject of brainwashing, uh, Magadora, oh, Dave, uh, well, you know, these secret societies control us, manipulate us in so many ways. Uh, you know, Dave had some questions about, uh, what was it, Dave, uh, in particular, the Illuminati, uh, was it? Exactly. I, I've, I've, thank you very much for being on the show, for being on the network. It's been a pleasure listening to the first hour of the show. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But as you were talking, uh, it's made me wonder um, what what is your take on this mysterious group that gets referred to as the Illuminati? I mean, you've talked um, at length about how they control us, how they manipulate uh, the education system, the political system, religions. Is is this group referred to collectively as the Illuminati, or is there some part of it that is the Illuminati? What do you think? Well, it's a really ancient group, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> we call them Illuminati, but they have their own names and stuff like that. But in general, we call it Illuminati, but they are split up and they have their own groups within themselves. There are good guys too within Illuminati. I know people within the Illuminati that are part of, actually, they mostly controlled by the Vatican. And, uh, you know, they have been in, the, in the control for a long time, even before the Vatican started to be a, in existence. They controlled the world in many ways through all these secret organizations, mind control, and, you know, making people slaves of the system, nothing more. And they have been going on for so long, and we're we talking about thousands of years at least, at least thousands of years in as far as I know, probably more, probably more, but at least thousands of years, because if you look back at history and you look at historical records, it's always the same about people in power, the people that are below the power that are, you know, like the common people that have to work, that have to be the slaves and you have the kings and you have rulers, you have, to, you know, whatever. And uh, that, that's how it has been for like thousands of years. And uh, this group, has they have a lot of knowledge because of one, uh, one thing in particular is they know the secret about uh, reincarnation and astral projection and these kind of things. So they are actually able to reincarnate, but with the consciousness and knowledge from their previous life. Personal, I remember many of my own previous lives. I, I came here to teach people about things like that, but that's a different story. Anyway, these guys know that kind of stuff, and they, they totally use it all, everything. You know, they use uh, not only spiritual techniques. They, 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 they don't only use, like, you know, uh, uh, religious control. They use educational control, you know, like the educational system. They teach people things that are not true. Uh, they control the media. They control the politicians. They control basically everything that exists, the pharmaceutical industry, the food industry. They put chemicals in the food that will make you dumber and number and more easy to control. They release poison in the air. They uh, put things in your water supply. Uh, they control you in so many ways. Technology, for example, like now we're sp- like now I'm on the cell phone. I'm on, on a cell phone right now, and they they, they use the cell phone too to send out um, what should I call it? You know, like energetic uh, beams that control your mind and stuff like that to make you dumber. And everything that is kind of electronic is controlled by by these people because. Actually, electricity is a, it's not a real positive thing because it keeps people kind of trapped. Because when you do, for example, astral projection, 
if you go close to a power line or something like that, you know, with uh, electricity, you will become kind of stuck in electricity because it's like the electricity is keeping people or the spirit stuck is uh, energy. I don't know how to explain it properly because it's kind of difficult and complex, but uh, all technology is made only to keep us busy, to keep us watch TV, uh, sit with the computer, use the phones, send messages, you know, to not do anything useful in our life. We go to work, we come home, we sit down, we watch a movie, or we sit down with the computer and use the computer, we sit with the internet, we do things like that. That's what they want us to do. And that's how it's been for all the thousands of years before technology. They made us do any other things, you know, like you go to work, then you come home, then you play with the kids, whatever, then you go and make different games and stuff like that. All those things have been created just for, the, like football, for example, or like, you know, in the uh, United States, you have, uh, well, American football, I guess you call it, which is <laughs> a big thing over there. Like uh, soccer, uh, you call it there. Soccer here is very famous and big, and people are so crazy about it. And it's just a couple guys running around with a ball, nothing wrong, but people are so, they are completely, you know, like hypnotized into that kind of things. So they completely controlled by all the stuff that's going on, all the so-called entertainment. Oh, yes. Yeah. So even even in the past, uh, the gladiator uh, matches. Uh, yeah. Or when we that's see bullfights. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's a good example. Certainly. That's how, yeah, that's how they did things in the, before all the technology. They did things like that with the gladiators and stuff. They always had entertainment to keep people busy from reality, to keep people out of reality, to keep them watching other things than themselves. You know, Magador, them away from themselves. You know, yeah. Magador, um, you, you and um, Dave here would probably uh, get along uh, quite well, uh, you know, both having a lot of interest in the esoteric uh, and, and a lot of these different groups and societies. Um, Absolutely. Also though the, yeah, also though, the, I mean, Magador's mother had had been in the government. He had been exposed to that from a very young age. And Magador, uh, Dave here actually has a, a past with the government, uh, with in the FBI. Uh, he he had been in. Oh, in okay. The, so um, yeah, no, I don't know, Dave. Um, I don't know. Did you have some uh, some thoughts for Magador? You know, where we could steer the the conversation. I was I was just thinking about uh, how for for so many people, especially in America, following a sports team. Um, or several sports teams related to a geographical region of the of the country in which they live uh, involves a lot more um, energy and uh, and time and commitments of of those types than people devote to their religions. And I think of what you said about how religions enslave people and get them caught up in in a kind of a false. Uh, a false energy that that distracts them from their true selves and their true purpose. You know, if if you think about what professional sports does or do, yeah. uh, it's 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 very similar, if if not it's, even more yeah, it's profoundly effective. Thing. Yeah. It, yeah, it's basically the same thing, but it's the, for the non-spiritual people. <laughs> <laughs> because you have the spiritual people that are looking for one thing, and you have the non-spiritual people that are looking for other entertainment. So you have the sports and all that kind of stuff for the non-spiritual people. Okay, they don't go to church, they don't care about going to, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they go to watch football or whatever, you know. And you have the two. That's what they are doing. That they are controlling both sides of humanity of our, you know, our desires and our thoughts and our uh, needs and our uh, what should i call it uh, i don't even know how to express myself <laughs> it's the, interesting that the both control. activities take place mainly on sundays yeah yeah that's true <laughs> it you know, takes both, place both, on sundays because both you sunday gentlemen. is sunday because it's the day of the sun and the sun is you know the the uh, the god of the solar system the sun day is the day of the sun it has a particular meaning too. It's spiritual. It has uh, esoteric meaning, just because it's called Sunday. 
Oh, but there's that, a, it's a long history to get into all that kind of stuff right now. Absolutely. I don't think we have time to get into that. Both of you gentlemen uh, have yeah, just a, a lot of exposure, you know, to, um, well, the situations where, you know, I guess you always have to be wondering, you know, who's on whose side. I mean, there could be groups within groups. Um, D- Dave, I mean, you know, in your past, um, Magador, uh, you know, your past growing up um, around the people your grandfather and father exposed you to, um, you know, you surely yeah. have, to, have to always wonder, you know, what people's real motives are with a lot of the organizations and groups you're oh, yeah. you're involved with. And, and you have like, to really... Yeah, you know, I mean, there are a lot of times, yeah, there's just a few of you who aren't sure about others within your organization. Um, and it's really uh, always wondering who to trust, right? Like I told you, from my experience, the best thing to do is to be on your own. And that's all you need to be on your own. You don't have to be part of any, you know, system or religion or order or anything. Be yourself and that's it. Be yourself and learn your to manage your own life and live your own spirituality, control your own, you know, for example, astral projection and things that I speak a lot about Uh is astral projection because that's very important to me because I know how important it is to understand that kind of things like astral projection and lucid dreaming is basically the most important thing you can ever learn in your lifetime because that will give you the freedom because after your life, when you die, some someday you're going to die. And if you're not aware, if you don't know what's going on, you will go basically anywhere. But you if you are mentioned... aware and you have learned, mm-hmm. because astral projection is about basically, uh, you know, navigating and understanding the afterlife before you actually go to the afterlife, because that's where you're going to go when you die anyway to the astral worlds. You've so when you learn dream. how to control it, what? what, what? Oh, you've mentioned the dream world uh, as well in, in, yes. in previous interviews. Um, you, I've heard you've mentioned some very, um, very enlightening information on on that. Um, what would you have to say with our listeners on on the dream, the dream state? Well, the dream state is actually very important. That's why I'm talking about lucid dreaming and things like that, because lucid dreaming means basically that you are aware that you are dreaming. So you control the dream. If you are unaware, there are entities and things that are controlling you, implanting ideas, emotions, feelings and stuff into your mind while you're sleeping, into your dreams, they are manipulating you. But if you learn lucid dreaming, you are the guy in control they are not anymore in control because you will be aware and you will see them and you can control and you will stop them from attacking you. But if you're just a guy going to sleep, like most people, they go to bed and they go to sleep and they think, okay, they do just a dream and stuff like that. But in reality, it's not like that because many dreams are actually, you know, kind of like uh, astral projections. You actually go out of your body and you go to another dimension or you go to a parallel universe you go to alternate uh, reality things like that but if you become aware and you understand it you will be able to control it and do it on your own and you will actually be able to go where you want to go and you know control the dream and uh, for example if you have a um, many people have nightmares for example and nightmares are basically entities attacking you trying to implant things into your mind and stuff like that scaring you out there to, to to frighten you that's one thing or you have other dreams like you know um, for example sexual dreams is very common so, you know dreams about sexual things and that's also a, a way to manipulate people because that's a kind of uh, how do you call it in english like a uh, I, don't, I, I don't recall the word right now, but it's like a, a primal thing. Yeah, I guess that's the word, a primal uh, physical thing need that the physical body has. Sex is a physical thing, not, not, not a spiritual thing. But anyway, people have a lot of sexual dreams. And that's okay. It, it's not a big problem, but there's a lot of spirits that take advantage of people within the, the, these sexual dreams because they're so-called 
astral vampires that use your energy. So you will be less uh, awake, less aware. You will maybe have some disease, maybe be weak, maybe feel tired, different things. It can be many symptoms that appear after, but uh, it's so many things they do against you in the sleep. When you are sleeping, there are so many entities around you, you can't even imagine it. When you go to bed, mm -hmm. there are so many entities around you trying to manipulate you, trying to control you, trying to get into your mind, into your dreams and manipulate or even create your dreams and make it the way they want it to be. So you will be controlled and manipulated and have a dream that may be uh, Dave, Sometimes it, Dave, Dave types in, I don't know if you can see the messages here, uh, Dave types in, uh, how do you protect yourself? You know, I mean, is it just like uh, practicing more and more with the, the lucid dreaming? Um, you know, yeah, how do you well, uh, well, basically, the thing you have to do is to start doing astral projection and lucid dreaming, because then you will become aware of these Dave also, Dave also, and uh, Dave, kind of Dave, things. Dave also mentions the word shielding. Shielding. Does that mean shielding? anything to you? Yes, yeah, shielding mean, is to. Is, what yeah, is that? Is what a, is that? If you could explain uh, for me and the listeners. It's an energetic way to protect yourself from these uh, negative energies and stuff. You can do that with a meditation, for example, where you go and you lay down. And you do a meditation where you imagine yourself within a protective. Uh, how could I? How can I explain it? Like a, well, like you are surrounded by a, for example, a glowing ball of light that is protecting you from all kind of negative influences. So you're so creating you this. Enter. You're creating this reality, basically. You can create that yourself mm -hmm. if you want if you go and lay down and meditate and imagine that you are protected and you have this ball around you protective light whatever uh, a shield you can imagine many things but anyway that okay, can so protect you against many of these uh, negative entities yeah okay so, uh, men mental, so mental training there are and dis discipline over time mental training and discipline over time uh, richard eventually. go back to whatever you did before when we were talking about the volume okay you're you're blasting out everybody. Oh, am I again? Okay, sorry. Um, I, I guess it just um, yeah, it takes practice, practice, practice. So, Dave had um another uh, question about intelligence organizations. Uh, Dave, could you could you enlighten us? Yeah, when you were talking about all the different organizations that these ancient groups have infiltrated and manipulated, I wonder if you might talk about what you've learned about specific ways that these groups have uh, influenced or manipulated uh, intelligence services around the world over the years? Well, they have influenced by the way of infiltrating all of these organizations, intelligence services, and any group actually, you know, basically anything anything that exists in the world, any group, any organization, any 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 system is controlled, almost anything, not all, but basically everything, whether it's intelligence, it's agencies, or educational system, or is religion, or whatever it is, it has been manipulated and controlled by these people from a long time ago, from from the beginning, basically, they have always been trying to infiltrate all that is being created, everything that is like the new age scene, for example, that we got now that is very popular and stuff like that. But it's so heavily manipulated by these guys because they infiltrated it when it started, because they always look out for these kind of things. When something new starts, they are looking out for that and they will infiltrate it and start to manipulate it and start to take over the control and the power and become the leaders of the of, of the whole thing. And they then they take over and start to manipulate it and use it for their own gains. And, you know, they just to manipulate people and control the people, keep us down and like the intelligence agencies and stuff like that, for example, they use 
also a lot like uh, your FBI or something like that, if I remember correctly. No? That's right. I was in the FBI for 16 years. It seems pretty okay. clear from watching uh, watching the media over the last few years that the directors of the FBI have not really been in charge. They've clearly been dictated no, to yeah. as, as, as to what crimes they're supposed to investigate and pursue and which ones they're supposed to ignore and gloss over. Yes, you know, things yes. like, like human trafficking, especially child trafficking and pedophilia. Yes, yeah. That, yeah, that's a disaster, all, all that kind of stuff. That's really bad because, well, it's a, that's a completely different topic on its own, but yeah, child trafficking, pedophilia and all that kind of stuff is horrible things that's really going on. It's so it goes so deep and it's really big, really, really huge part of society. People don't even know how, how deep it goes and how many people are involved and stuff like that. How and long they, do you think that they've been involved in this, that powerful people have been doing these horrible things to, to children? How long? At least, I would say, we're speaking about a couple of thousand years at least back because this has always been a part of the system of the people in power. It's a kind of, you know, like a, a sacrifice and a ritual that they are doing. And they use the children uh, for, uh, it's not about only sex, not, not because they want sex, they use the children and stuff because of the energy. Because children, they have very powerful energy and they are very easy to manipulate and stuff. And if you have used the children, they become actually more easy to manipulate. After. And that's what they do because they split personalities and stuff like that. And they create new personalities and they create like this kind of uh, what you call it in English, you know, like. Uh, uh, oof, I, don't, I don't really remember how you call it in English, but, you know, like. Uh, it used to be People called split, split. split personality disorder or multiple personalities. Yeah, but uh, it's Alters. all because they create it and they manipulate them and they use hypnosis and different techniques to control them so they can make a command or, a, yeah, like a command and they will switch personality like that and they will become a, the other person, but they want to remember it after they will do uh, like a mission, for example, and they will do something like, for example, kill a person or whatever, and they will change back to to themselves and they won't remember what they did and they they don't even know what they did and stuff. And they actually can do that kind of things. I know a lot about that because I study hypnosis for like you see, 15 years, I guess. Now. Uh, okay, guys. Training. This obviously this is where I have to come in and and. Uh and get involved because you, you know I'm going to only do this for just a second but yeah if if you if you need to repeat that if I mean I all I can say is if the people are listening didn't hear what he just said this is why there is 100,000 child sex slaves under the getty they're not there just for sex I try to explain that to people they are being tortured they are being eaten yes. and and the key word that I have not heard here a couple key words I have not heard. One important one is Satan. Lilith could be a stand-in for Satan, and I was going to wanted to see with your experiences with Lilith because I know that Lilith is really the liaison between us and Satan, and she always has been since the beginning. And that's the one that's really involved in all these exercises, and that's the one that has really started all of this child sacrifice business. Lilith started all of that, and the collection yeah. of loose and the energy. You know, Satan didn't start that. Kind of, yeah. Okay. But yeah, last thing, that, that, Jesus. You got to bring up Jesus, too, because it's like, Dave, you said, what do you do for protection? You know, I mean, I know, I don't know what you do, but when, you, when you're doing something, you're doing astral and you've got some demon or something that thinks it's powerful, it there's nothing that shuts it down quicker than the name of Jesus. That's true. Jesus right? is a real uh, guy. Yeah, that's true. Jesus is very powerful. I'm actually... Uh, Personally, a Christian, but in my own sense, I don't go to church because they are manipulating. I things. agree. I, don't I, I believe in Jesus. I know Jesus was a real person because I went back in time many times uh, to see what really was going on. 
I'm, for example, right here, I can show you, but I'm here, for example, with a big cross, and I have a Jesus statue, statue or whatever you call it in English, and I have a lot of uh, kind of Christian things around me here, and that's actually good because that it does protect you. It's true. You can use the name of Jesus to expel a negative entity. It does work. It does work. It's, it's, true. it's so it's fast. Important that you mentioned it, it. It works better than it's anything. Very good that you mentioned it. Yeah. What else works better than the name of Jesus? I, you know, people, they use Archangel Michael and this and that and all this, or yeah. white light, you know, blue light, violet light. But Jesus, that's so simple. It works so fast. It's yeah. instant. You can't even say the, the name is, before it's yes. they're gone. Combine right. it, and that's the better thing you can do. Use the blue light, whatever. Use the energy balls, but use the name of Jesus too in the same time. Yeah, in the name of Jesus, I expel right. all the evil, for example. And it does work, and that's true. It's very and there true. are there are many things you can do. There are also physical things you can but do. But the people example, that are listening, the, the people that are listening that think that this stuff sounds satanic or evil or wicked, they need to understand that you use Jesus when you do this, and course, he is the I, most powerful. Personally, a Christian person. I'm Christian. I believe in no. Jesus, and Jesus is a highly regarded figure of mine. You know, I uh, I really appreciate Jesus and uh, the, the, he, you know all of the things that he did and he said. The problem is some of it has been manipulated in the Bible and in the church, so you have to kind of connect with Jesus on your own to understand what's, what is the real truth about Jesus. You have to connect to understand the truth. That I could tell sense. you anything, and it could be a truth or it could be a lie, but you have to connect yourself with Jesus or mm. any, any spirit or angel, whatever, like Michael or Gabriel or whatever. Right. They too, they actually, they they can do a lot of things. I I've been working with the angels and everything for so many years. I've been doing so much magical work too. But it, it's a completely different story. But anyway, it, it, there is a lot of power into it. And uh, these angels and Jesus, they do exist and they are real. And that's for me, it's no doubt because I've tried it and it's worked. And then okay, then it's real. If it works, it's real. <laughs> that's all I need to know. I've been doing all kind of magic that exists in the world. I know kind of everything, all sorts of types of magic, whether it's, you know, like voodoo or witchcraft or sorcery or black magic or white magic, low magic, folklore magic, you know, anything. I know all of these systems and I've been practicing, trying out and practicing all these kind of different magical systems. And in the end, well, it works with things like Jesus, uh, you know, angels, but also your personal spiritual guides and angels, you have your personal guides and angels. When you do astral projection, you can ask your uh, personal guide to come to assist you and he will appear. There's actually a very good book I will recommend you right now that I got here. It's called The Inner Guide Meditation by Edwin Stein Brecher. You can find it in Amazon for sure. It's called The Inner Guide Meditation, a Spiritual Technology for the 21st Century. That's actually a very, very good book because it teaches you how to connect with your own inner guide, your own spiritual self, with your uh, with your uh, kind of guardian angel and stuff like that. That is, it's very good and it works because it gives results. Wow. Uh, Dave, uh, Magador was speaking on the uh, uh, Freemasons earlier. Uh, did you have any other questions about, uh, you know, either the, you know, the Masonic group he and his uh, relatives have been with or, or any other um, related question? Yeah, I'd love to hear uh, his take on the, the Rosicrucian group in particular, and I'd love to hear some more about the 99 degrees of Freemasonry. No, okay. Well, the Rosicrucian, I'm, I'm actually a Rosicrucian too. Uh, but the problem with the, uh, the Rosicrucian is the same as with the Masons. 
there are the corrupt groups and there are the legitimate good guys and it's kind of hard to you know find out who are the good guys because the real major group when it comes to the Rosicrucians are the so-called AMORC, A-M-O-R-C, I don't know how to say it in English, but AMORC. That's right. And that's the, 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 that's, that's the big major Rosicrucian group, but there are others too, like the Rosicrucian fraternity, RC, plus I don't even remember all the names because there are, there are many different uh, Rosicrucian groups and fraternities and stuff like that, but uh, uh, the, the big ones, uh, they actually do teach some very good stuff because I was a member for many years. I've been a member for like, I was a member for mem around 10 years, I guess, before I left. And, um, well, uh, I didn't really experience anything bad, but uh, I did see there were some kind of things going on within within the leadership of the group for example the grand master was chained with a different grand master and stuff like that and the other grand master created a new uh, rosicrucian group and things like that and they had conflicts and they were you know kind of like <laughs> fighting you know like children that is not very spiritual that's like kind of i was thinking like okay they are like it just that. sounds it's like kind a, of, it just sounds like a typical squabble that you'd find in a regular uh, religious group yeah. like in a Christian community. It, the same thing happened with uh, the orders like Golden Dawn, if you know Golden uh, Golden Dawn. Mm -hmm. Well, Golden Dawn too. They were doing the same thing. They had a grandmaster and the ex grandmaster and the stuff, there, and they were fighting together. And I was looking at the internet and I was seeing their conversation and stuff, and they were fighting like, like children, you know, talking bad to each other and thinking, okay, if these guys are supposed to be so spiritual and high and stuff, <laughs> why are they acting like this, you know? So, you know, you know, in the end, you know, all you have to do is your, be yourself and find your own way, your own path. You don't have to, all these groups and all these secret orders of society, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. Cool. The only thing that matters is yourself. That's the only thing that matters is yourself. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Meg Megador, yeah. I, I saw yeah. um, on your uh, Facebook uh, profile, um, you also had some links to some information regarding the uh, the Pleiadians. Um, I don't know uh, what what your 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 uh, well what you could share with the listeners um, who aren't familiar, you know, whatsoever with with this. And and, and Dave, I was wondering if you had anything to, to contribute uh, regarding that uh, as well. I think Stephen could tell us more about the Pleiadians than just about anybody, but I'd love to hear uh, your insights, Megador. Well, uh, the Pleiadians, in my experience, are now a kind of spiritual entity. They are spiritual entities now because they used to be physical and stuff, living in the Pleiadian star system in a specific uh, planet in one of the stars in the Pleiades or how you call it in English and uh, well but that was so long time ago actually uh, it's kind of complicated to start to explain that because the human race here right now we we didn't come from here we didn't start here we we come from a different place before we lived on for example Mars that's why you find things like ruins and things on Mars right now. You can go and look on the internet and find evidence of civilization and life on Mars and stuff like that. But now it's uh, destroyed, but there are still life on Mars below the uh, ground. Right now they live be, uh, below the ground uh, within the, you know, beyond the surface because they have a problem with the atmosphere and stuff. They have this technology to sustain their life and stuff. But that's, that's a long history itself. But anyway, we don't come from here and we don't come from Mars. There are also people living on the moon. That's why we never went back to the moon, because the people of the moon are very, you know, they are like totally against both uh, the human race and the Martian race. And the human race, 
well, now I'm talking about the governments or the leaders of the world. And the leaders of this world are working together with the leaders of Mars, and they are now trying to I guess. Sorry, terraform, perfect. terraform Mars. You know, to, to they are assisting each other because we they got are Stephen back in. All right. To throw something what? in, what he was saying yeah. right now about the the Pleiadians. And, and being in the spirit world and all that, it's they're they're in the fourth density now. They've elevated. They there were humans like us, but now they're in the fourth density. That's why they can interact with exactly. us. Yeah. See, and that's that concept of densities is real important. And and the same thing. Like when you talked about the astral, when when you're going into the astral, you're going into the fourth density. But the yes. the spirits when we die, we go from the fourth density into the fifth density. You know, we pass through the fourth. Yeah, there is a yes. Right? There is a, of course, there's a difference. That's, that's where we want to end up the, in, in the, the fifth. Yeah. But the the aliens and whatnot, uh, you know, the good the SO, uh, service to self and the service to others, they're all in the fourth. The service to self don't get past the fourth. They never get into the fifth. They stay in the fourth. And from what I understand, yeah, that's true. There is a limit because they can't get above. Uh, well. And we can't. Like they hate saying, that. Service to self and service to others and all that. But things. there's another thing. There Gabe, is a limit. And, and uh, Magdor, I think, I don't know, you tell me this, but one of the things that I've noticed is I always thought there's like nine densities. And now I'm finding out there's sub-densities at the highest levels. There's another oh. density above ascended there masters. Are, a whole bunch of there them. There are huh? so many levels. Uh, okay, I, I, help me I've with this. this for- Let me ask. I, I, you're, you can help me with this. Okay, I yeah. see a level above Ascended Masters, and I call it the Golden Pillars. I don't know what else mm-hmm. to call it. And at this point, the entities start to merge and become uh, multiple personality entities. And, and, yes. this, and so I've been dealing with that, and I'm not sure what to call that, I, uh, the ninth density or something like that. But this is a whole new thing for me. But the thing is, and a lot of people don't understand is that when you go into the astral and you start dealing with these entities, especially when you go into a place like the Getty, you're dealing with entities from every single level, practically, all the way up to, you know, practically the top. You know, and I don't know where yeah. Lucifer fits into this system, but I think he's mm. pretty high up there. Somewhere probably... L- Lucifer is actually very high up, that's true, yeah. Is he higher than the angels? Not- is Lucifer higher than the angels? I would say yes, he is higher than the angels. That's what I would say, yeah. Yeah, but, he's but now, higher than the angels. Help me out with this level. What would you call it, this this level above Ascended Masters? Where, it, to me, it only seems like there's a small, small number of entities in there, these multiple personality entities. But what do you see when you see that? Yeah, I understand what you... Uh, talking about well, what 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 should I call it or name it? It's uh, hey, to me I all I see is it. like pillars. I see like pillars, and I see energy. It's, well, in the it's one of the higher levels. It's more like uh, one of the more truest form, the highest level. Okay. One of the more higher level of consciousness. I, I envision there, it there are a rib cage, like a rib cage. Like what? Like like the ribs on your body and the heart, you know, ah, like the, the ribs yeah. around the heart, and the yeah, heart would yes, be the yes. creator, would be source, would be the highest level, and then this other level is like like a rib cage, but it's it's in the form of these pillars, kind of a thing. But I to me it seems like it serves a function, the same sort of like a rib cage or like a protection or guard, a guard, if you will. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, it does make sense, uh, totally, yeah. I, I've yeah. seen, this is, I've never been able to talk to anybody about this because, you know, it's only what I see, and, and you know, I never saw anything like this before, so I had no idea that it could exist, I'm trying, but when, once I discovered this, I started seeing it all over the place in the uh, astral, that it was, that there were actually, and, okay, this is what I see, I see that this is a level that's above Satan, and I believe that the that these entities yeah. actually are the ones that are going to. One of these entities is the one that is going to actually deal with Satan and correct things that are uh, destined yeah, to be corrected. Yes. Does that does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, I, I believe the same. Yes, yes. you see it. So in other words, totally it's because almost like Satan is on a very low level. Yeah. he can't. He is you know a very low level, and 
these these entities are very high level uh -huh. and uh, you know like satan is a low level entity like here for example we are on the planet earth we have physical form uh -huh. it's actually a very low level spiritually speaking you know like we are level very low. three i think we said level three yes yeah, so like that. would you say that satan may be on the same level as the ascended masters mm, in a way because uh, these ascended masters some of them are actually false they are like well they call them ascended masters and all that kind of stuff but in reality they are false masters and things okay. they are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I just I like, well, like real quick you, to throw this you in there. You would call them what? He says false masters. But okay, there's another thing I want to throw out there. I learned that the, even among the Pleiadians, who we associate with the good guys, that there are like criminals because they're like humans, and there's bad Pleiadians, and they and also <laughs> I understand there's Pleiadians that have been taken over, cloned, and. Uh, had their minds manipulated and now they work for the dark side. So you can't even trust a Palladian. No, you can't trust almost anybody you, you except can't. yourself. You can't. That's yeah. the problem because Jesus. everything is corrupt. Everything is corruptible. And you I, have all the levels Dave, and stuff. But I hope Dave, asks, Dave, I hope there are always stuff, groups. Dave. There are always the good guys and the bad guys. You Dave know, asks, so many Magador. Uh, Dave asks yes. where does you mentioned Lucifer earlier, and you were speaking of the angels uh, and, and, and the Ascended Masters. Uh, Dave asks, where, where does Jesus fit in the hierarchy? Well, Jesus, to me, uh, to me personally, Jesus was a guy, uh, like a, no a normal guy, actually, but not normal in the sense at all, because he became ascended, like an Ascended Master in, in the end, but he, he was not the Son of God or anything like that no more than anybody else he was a guy that studied he went and he went to different parts of the world all the part that they don't tell you in the bible from he was 13 years old until he was 32 years old or something like that all those years where he, what happened he went and he traveled in the world he went to i think tibet and things like that there's a lot of documentation that if you really look it up and he was searching, he was exploring, and he learned a lot of esoteric things. And he, he became enlightened, what you would call enlightened. And, uh, but he was actually a normal guy, I believe. You know, I, I don't think he was any you know, like, like a spiritual, uh, <laughs> godly person or anything like that. But people okay. started to believe that. Dave, was, did you have uh, any other... Uh... I would have to. I would have to believe that that Jesus, in this hierarchy as you described it, would would have to be, would have to have achieved some sort of a higher level of consciousness or, or godhood to use that word, than the Lucifer yeah. and the angels, because you did describe where they fit in the in the hierarchy, you know, relative to each that's other. Why that's why I'm using the word enlightened. He he, right. he became enlightened, which mm -hmm. means he went above. So yeah, uh, now in his spiritual form, where wherever he is right now, he's, I believe, he's in a higher form because his name works. He's uh, like uh, uh, I forgot your name, <laughs> sorry, but uh, like you said earlier here, uh, the name Jesus it works against evil and all that kind of stuff. So 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 he he, he is a very powerful entity right now. Whatever. You want to call it a spirit entity. He, he is a he is something real, and he still exists. But now he is in a spiritual form. He lived here earlier like a human, but mm -hmm. then he did a lot of work. He became enlightened, or whatever you want to call it, and he ascended, and he died, and he went. Uh, but he didn't actually die on the cross and all that. That's all bullshit. He lived a long life, and he had daughters and children and all kind of stuff. But anyway, in the end, he died at the age of, I think, I don't remember exactly, 80 years or something like that. But anyway, after he died, he became like a very high spiritual entity. Yeah, that's true. He went to a very high level. No doubt about that. I have to ask you then about Jesus' offspring then, because people like the... The Merovingians claimed that they were the direct descendants of Jesus, uh, Jesus's uh, progeny. Do you believe that? 
Uh, well, um, I don't know who are the descendants of Jesus right now, to be honest, but yeah, he, he did live on. There is so much evidence. If you read, for example, you, everybody know the movie, The Da Vinci Code. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's actually based on a real book that is called Holy Grail, Holy Blood, or maybe it's reverse Holy Blood, Holy Grail. I don't right. remember that. But that's actually a very good book. Read that book. It's very fat, and it's three or four different researchers that traveled around the world to try to find a real story about Jesus and what he was doing, what happened. And it's a very interesting book, actually. Holy Grail, Holy Blood, uh, Blood I think it's called. And it's very well documented. They have a lot of documentation and information. And uh, they are like three researchers that were traveling around the world doing a lot of research about the history of Jesus and his life. And they go into the temples and about all kinds of uh, secret orbs and stuff. It's very, it's a big book. I think it's like 500 pages or something like that. It's very good. Dave, did you have any other questions for Megan? That's uh, that's that's really enlightening. I have that book, and I've I've sort of skimmed through it before, but I've never actually dug into it and and read it. And I'm going to to change that just for the for the listener's yeah. sake. It's uh, the <laughs> authors are uh, Henry Lincoln, Michael Bajent, and Richard Lee. Holy yeah, blood, holy true. grail. Holy blood, holy grail. Yeah, look into it. Really read it from the beginning Definitely to will. the end. I really recommend you to do that because it has a lot of information and a lot of truth into it. And that's how the movie, The Da Vinci Code, and the book, The Da Vinci, da Vinci Code, came to be. Because the guy, uh, I don't remember the name of the guy. Dan Brown. The, 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 yeah, the Dan Brown. And he actually ripped us from the, that book. He just <laughs> copied the, what, the story from that he book. Did. He created a movie. And well, yeah, he just ripped it off. <laughs> Well, um, we, we only have a couple of minutes left, um, but we definitely would uh, love to plan to have you on for more shows, uh, Magador. Yeah, it's been very, very interesting. Um, with the last few minutes, uh, what would you like to, to uh, you know, what advice do you have for the listeners? Uh, you know, what would you like to, to sum up in, in reminding the listeners of uh, before the next time uh, we have you on? My advice is very simple. Stay away from all kind of religions, uh, you know, orders, secret orders and systems, uh, politics, whatever, and look into yourself. Learn astral projection, lucid dreaming, and find the truth on your own. That's my best advice I can ever give anybody. Really learn astral projection and lucid dreaming, both of them. There is a good book called Astral Dy Dynamics by uh, Robert Bruce, that is a very excellent book to learn astral projection. It's excellent. Uh, that's how I learned it, actually, a long, long time ago. And there is another book called uh, Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by Stephen LaBerge, I think it's called. And both of those books are really the best books on both astral projection and lucid dreaming. And that's what people should look into. And like I mentioned, the other book that is called uh, The Inner Guide Meditation by Edwin Steinbrecher, which is also very good because you will learn how to get in contact with your inner self and your higher self and your uh, kind of uh, spiritual guides and things like that. That's what people need to learn, to get in touch with themselves and their reality and the reality outside of themselves. And, forget about this false reality down here we are right now and explore what is out there with outside of this world. Very good. And, um, oh, uh, one last uh, thing in closing uh, as a topic. I, I, did, I did notice um, you had recently posted on your Facebook um, just some photos or, or, or references to... Um, to UFO sightings uh, to down near you, where you are in Argentina. Um, I imagine you have pretty clear skies a lot of times down there. Do you, uh, do you get a lot of UFO? Exactly, 
Yeah, yeah, that's actually a very good thing to mention because I actually live in a small town called Capiscia del Monte and it's world famous for UFO activity. We have so much activity here, it's actually really crazy. We see UFOs all the time. Actually, a couple, I, I guess maybe you saw I posted in my Facebook that I saw a UFO and stuff like that. If you didn't, you will see yes. if you yes. go down a little bit. I was watching the and that happens all the time. There is so much activity. It's like a place in Nor Norway that is also very famous. That is called Hestalen in Norway. And he, I actually know the guy who is the lead scientist of the project in, in Norway. He's a Rosicrucian and stuff. But anyway, here in the place that I live is called Capisha de Monte. It's spelled C-A-P-I-L-L-A. And D E L and then M O N T E Capilla del Monte, if you want to say it in English, Con uh, with a double L, Capilla del Monte. You, you can look it up in uh, in uh, Wiki, uh, Wikipedia, for example, and it will say that it's famous for uh, paranormal sightings, UFO activity, and stuff like that. There is a place called Cerro Uritorco. Uritorco is U R E T O R C O. Uritorco. Uritorco. And that's the mountain, basically, the mountain that is here close to us. Excellent. Uh, well, yeah, uh, anyone who hasn't. Um... You know, th through his Facebook profile, you can you can look uh, look at more of that uh, that he's posted. I, yeah, around here uh, where I am located, there's just too much uh, you know industrial pollution and smog in, in the sky, um, you know, to be able to yeah. to see much. But um, yeah, I can imagine it's it's um, a whole different uh, sky where where you're living there. Yeah, it's a very small town. It's very clear. It's it's beautiful actually. Uh, I, I will send you some links later on, but uh, I think I have to close uh, close down on the interview right now because the, my time is running out and I have yeah. things I have to do. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, uh, uh, well, we'll tell people to check out your um, YouTube channel. Uh, it's um, under yeah. uh, what is that? Just under Mag Magadors with an S, is that right? Maga yeah, with an S in the end because. They they deleted my ori original channel, all my videos. So now I just got a couple of videos. I used to have a ton of videos, but uh, YouTube deleted everything because they don't. They are also doing censorship, you know, against that kind of stuff. And I had well, so many visitors, so in the end, they deleted my channel. Well, I, I also included a link to uh, uh, many of your books at Lulu, L-U-L-U, -L -U, Lulu.com. Uh, forward slash spotlight forward slash Magador uh, had many of your books uh, listed there I believe yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah that's my page yeah for my books yeah and and of course if anyone wants to contact you uh, Magador at gmail.com correct that's right okay. or on my Facebook Magador just search Magador and I will probably be the first guy that pops up <laughs> Edward Alexander are. Magador well thank you so it's much Facebook uh, yeah, thank you too for the for the time. It was very nice, and I hope to talk to you soon. We will definitely have you on for more shows. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Good night. Keep leading. Thanks. Bye bye. Goodbye. And thank you, Dave, uh, for being on as well. Um, thank you, Richard. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you, Magador. And uh, be sure, uh, everyone, to check out Dave Robbins with uh, Mystic Freedom. Um, you yeah, know, for for more of Dave's uh, perspectives. Uh, well, uh, have a have a great night, Dave. You too, Richard. Thanks again. All right, thank you, and everyone, um, stick around for the Stephen D. Kelly show uh, coming up in just a few minutes. Here, uh, do help out and support the network. Until next time, transcend the construct. Regards. <laughs>